Times where I've been hit immediately and I've seen stars like in the cartoons. My last play as an NFL football player was a, a major concussion. He was placed in concussion protocol. Hundreds of concussions, concussions, concussion, concussion. Look, man, humans are barbaric. Back in the Roman days, people would watch gladiators fight to the death as a form of entertainment. Even up until a century ago, one of the most wholesome family pastimes was watching your local public execution. But as times have changed, so has our taste in sport. Instead of gladiators fighting to the death, we have more family-friendly sports, like basketball, hockey, baseball, and football. Yeah, in reality, we're still barbarians, and our thirst for blood is as high as ever. Some things just can't be changed, like how children will always yearn for the mind. Jokes aside, with advancements in sports science and changes in rules, athletes are more protected now than ever. But that doesn't change the fact that injuries still occur. They're inevitable. And of all the injuries athletes face, few are more scary than the concussion. And when two superhumans running 25 miles per hour at each other collide heads, we can see damages much worse than people suffering from a car crash. Damages that are irreversible, leading to a life full of pain. Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy, CTE, a brain disease caused by repeated head trauma, where the brain slowly degenerates over time. CTE may just be a candidate for one of the scariest diseases out there. For one, the symptoms usually aren't seen until decades after the head impacts, even if there hasn't been any kind of further impact during that period. This also means that there's no real way of telling if someone has the disease until it's too late. In fact, it's impossible to confirm a CTE diagnosis until the victim is dead and their brain is analyzed during the autopsy. The symptoms usually begin to appear after a decade of the head trauma, with memory loss, difficulty in concentration, and mood swings which can lead to aggressive behavior and suicidal thoughts. As time progresses, brain degeneration worsens which leads to the development of dementia. In this sense, CTE is pretty similar to Alzheimer's, but while Alzheimer patients begin to show symptoms in their 60s, CTE patients begin to show symptoms in their 40s, with the earliest case being a kid that was 17, and both diseases have no known cure. What's worse is that people can get CTE without even ever getting a concussion, and the implications of this are pretty alarming. See, when a player gets hit in the head hard enough, their coach is usually smart enough to take them out of the game and give them a couple weeks to recover. That is, unless you play for the Miami Dolphins. However, almost every play in football has some kind of mild impact which a player will never even sub out the game for. It's these soft impacts that can lead to CTE. Whenever someone hits their head, the bouncing of their brain within their skull causes the neurons to stretch. This stretching damages the neurons and it releases a protein known as tau. As head impacts continue, the tau builds up which causes cells to die, and furthermore, this causes more tau to build up. Notice how most of the stretching occurs in this center section of the brain. This is how it's supposed to look like in a healthy individual, and this is how it looks like in a person with CTE. Almost completely gone. Like your dad when he said he was gonna get the milk. Someone can have a couple concussions in their life and never get CTE, but another person can have zero concussions but a bunch of low impact hits and then get the disease. This is why CTE is so common among football players, but also seen in boxers, veterans, and the occasional dysfunctional family. However, it's the combination of ridiculously hard hits and the ridiculously high amount of hits that makes the NFL so notorious. In fact, a study from back in 2017 concluded that out of 111 ex-NFL players, only one didn't show signs of CTE. This is Tua Tagovailoa. After suffering this terrible concussion, he should have taken months to recover. However, the Dolphins cleared him to play the very next game. And then this happens. You're thinking about the back, the ankle, but he gets thrown to the ground. Again, wrenching that back, which yeah. was the issue last week. Yep. Sadly, Tua is only one case out of hundreds, and he will likely develop CTE later in his life. And it's almost become a stereotype among ex-NFL players about those who suffer from head pain and depression so badly that they take their own lives and donate their brains to science. Many of these players contributed to the Thousand Reasons for Hope, a remembrance of the first thousand brain donors and their immense impact on brain trauma research. 
Not only that, their impact is what made the NFL finally begin to protect their players. Believe it or not, not too long ago, the NFL was trying to push false data out by saying that concussions have no long-term impact. Only after a class action lawsuit initiated by ex-players did they finally start to make changes. That being said, no matter how many changes you make, whether that's to rules or helmets, you're never really going to fully prevent concussions. People will continue to play football and people will continue to get hurt. Now as long as these players, professional or not, are made aware of the risks and are able to make an informed decision to still keep playing, all power to them. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!